I'd like to call to order this public meeting of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York. Uh, at the end of the public meeting, we'll be uh, going into a short executive session to discuss personnel matters, and we anticipate that we will reconvene uh, in, a, in a public session after the executive session. I would like to read the following uh, notice into the record. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City of New York uh, are open to the public and the Board welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings and members of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the Board holds additional public hearings uh, each year in all of the five boroughs at which members of the public uh, may also speak. In addition, written communications to the Board are distributed to all trustees. The Board must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore cannot tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupts its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise, which interferes with Board discussion, after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons engaging in disruptive conduct. The university may seek disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws, which prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. May I now request that everyone take a moment uh, to mute your cell phone uh, or, or a BlackBerry. Thank you. As usual, CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon's meeting of the Board of Trustees live on cable channel 75. The meeting is also being webcast live and can be accessed by going to www.cuny.edu. The public session of this board meeting will be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can also be accessed via the CUNY website. Uh, on behalf of, of all the members of the board, I would like to uh, welcome the presence in the audience of Graduate School and University Center Interim President-Designate Chase F. Robinson and Kingsborough Community College Interim President-Designate Stuart Such. Thank you both uh, for your service. Uh, uh, to the university and your new roles on behalf of these important CUNY institutions. Tonight is a very special occasion in the life of the university. Almost 14 years ago, on July 22, 1999, the CUNY Board of Trustees approved Dr. Matthew Goldstein as chancellor. It is virtually impossible to, chron to effectively chronicle all of Matt's many accomplishments and achievements in one resolution, uh, but let me give it a try. Resolution number nine, Resolution of Appreciation, Chancellor Matthew Goldstein. Whereas Matthew Goldstein, a mathematician, statistician, and highly regarded administrator, was appointed Chancellor of the City of New York in 1999, becoming the first CUNY graduate, City College, class of 1963, to lead the university, having previously held the positions of president of Baruch College, president of the CUNY Research Foundation, and president of Adelphi University. And whereas prior to Chancellor Goldstein's appointment, a mayoral task force on the City University of New York uh, concluded that the university was, quote, an institution adrift, close quote. This task force, which I chaired, recommended the creation of clear standards, assessment, assessment methods, accountability policies, university-wide integration, and Chancellor Goldstein began his tenure with a series of crucial uh, reforms. Uh, designed to elevate CUNY's academic standards while maintaining its historic mission of access, including raising admission standards for the senior colleges, implementing standardized objective assessment <clears throat> measures, 
launching a massive faculty hiring initiative, strengthening partnerships with the New York City Department of Education, and establish, establishing performance metrics and accountability measures, most notably through the performance management process. And whereas the result of a university-wide emphasis on higher standards and academic rigor has been record enrollments, more than 270,000 degree-seeking students and 220,000 additional individuals in adult and continuing education, the hiring of nearly 2,000 new full-time faculty members, increased graduation rates on all campuses, and more and more high-achieving students coming to CUNY, as demonstrated by the consistent rise in average SAT scores of admitted students and the proliferation of CUNY students, winning nationally competitive student awards, including Rhodes, Truman, and Marshall scholarships. And whereas today CUNY has the most comprehensive program of K-12 collaboration of any university in the country in order to enhance student preparation, including the College Now program, which is the nation's largest dual enrollment program, with over 20,000 public school students participating annually, as well as three specialized high school and 14 early college uh, high schools. More public stu school students choosing CUNY than ever before, with seven out of 10 of the university's first time freshmen having graduated from a New York City high school. And whereas Chancellor Goldstein's vision has included the creation of new schools and colleges within CUNY, including our acclaimed William E. McCauley Honors College, the CUNY School of Professional Studies, the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, the CUNY School of Public Health, and most recently, our new community college, the first new community college in, in New York City in more than four decades, now named the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College. And whereas Chancellor Goldstein has also emphasized the importance of research and study, particularly in the STEM disciplines, through the launch of the Decade of Science Initiative, which focuses on improving student participation and proficiency, enhancing the university's research capacity, increasing funding to PhD students, upgrading laboratories across all our campuses, intensifying faculty recruiting efforts and building and upgrading science facilities, including the new CUNY Advanced Science Research Center set to open in 2014. And whereas in order to realize the university's academic priorities and main, maintain student access during a time of declining state funding, Chancellor Goldstein developed the so-called compact approach to funding, a partnership between government and the university that became the statewide financing model in 2011, when Governor Cuomo and the New York State Legislature approved for the first time historic legislation instituting a five-year tuition plan for CUNY and SUNY, budgetary stability, including maintenance of state uh, and city effort, and the earmarking of revenue back to the university. And whereas prior to 1999, the CUNY colleges were together raising less than 20 million an annually, 50 million annually in philanthropic gifts, and in 2004, Chancellor Goldstein initiated CUNY's first ever uh, university-wide Invest in CUNY fundraising campaign, which through the generous support of CUNY alumni, friends, and partners, met its goal of raising more than $1.2 billion in record time, and that is now in its second phase, with more than $2.5 billion already raised toward our $3 billion goal. And whereas Chancellor CUNY also initiated the creation of a common curricular structure through the Pathways to Degree Completion Initiative in order to streamline student transfers, enhance the quality of general education across the university, and ensure system-wide learning outcomes, 
bringing CUNY more in line with national norms, and ensuring that students do not exhaust financial resources and increase time to degree because of inconsistent transfer and general education policies. <coughs> and whereas Chancellor Goldstein has been nationally recognized for his educational leadership, serving on the U U.S. Teaching Commission and the New York State Commission on Higher Education and leading two national summits on public higher education in 2008 and 2010. And whereas Chancellor Goldstein has also exercised civic leadership, most recently chairing the 2010 New York City Charter Commission revision commission uh, by appointment of Mayor Michael Bloomberg and currently serving as chair of the New York City Regional Economic Development Council and a member of the new New York Education Reform Commission, both appointments of Governor Andrew Cuomo. And whereas Chancellor Goldstein has announced his intention to step down from the position of Chancellor as of June 30th, 2013, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York extends its profound gratitude to Chancellor Matthew Goldstein for leading an historic transformation of the university with thoughtful determination and consummate skill, raising its academic standards, expanding access to students, and strengthening its academic and administrative operations across the board, <coughs> thereby achieving an unprecedented and widely lauded CUNY renaissance that will advance the well-being of students and benefit New York City and state and the nation well into the future. Chancellor Goldstein, you have well earned the respect and affection of your fellow board members. You are the greatest chancellor in the history of the university. May I have a second, please? I second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Before I call on Chancellor Goldstein for his uh, rebuttal, <laughs> um, l let me acknowledge uh, what a pleasure it is to have uh, uh, Maggie Sedlis Goldstein with us in the audience and Seth Goldstein. <laughs> Matt? Benno, the best thing for me to do is to keep my mouth shut at this point. <laughs> Uh, I thank all of you dearly for being my partners uh, over these 14 years. It's been the most exhilarating and satisfying time uh, in my life. And uh, this board has been absolutely uh, supportive. Uh, your great counsel uh, and friendship means uh, much to me. And what can I say about our chair, uh, Benno Schmidt, and I'll have more to say about him uh, tomorrow, but Benno, uh, you laid the groundwork with your uh, institution adrift uh, study. Uh, I, uh, you know, really was the implementer, but you had the vision of where this university could go, and uh, it's been for me an extraordinary pleasure uh, having you as a friend first and foremost, but as a mentor and a colleague as well. Uh, you've been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you actually define what a great board chair should be. So I thank you for all of the work that you've done in partnership with this university. Thank you all. Uh, tonight, we're also very pleased to acknowledge, in addition, three individuals who have contributed mightily to the university uh, in various uh, ways. Let me call on Trustee uh, Kate Pasilli for the first resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is a special privilege for me. 
Resolution number 10, Resolution of Appreciation for Regina Perugi. Whereas, since assuming, whereas Dr. Regina Perugi was named President of Kingsborough Community College in May 2004 by the Board of Trustees upon recommendation of Chancellor Matthew Goldstein. And whereas, since assuming the presidency of Kingsborough Community College in August 2004, she has worked tirelessly to lead the college to new levels of achievement, with an emphasis on improving institutional effectiveness and student learning outcomes. And whereas, during her tenure, Kingsborough Community College has instituted a strategic planning process, expanded an innovative learning communities model, instituted a workforce and economic development center, developed new academic programs, engaged alumni in college advancement efforts, and re-energized faculty development programs, and in 2013 was chosen from a pool of over 1,000 colleges as the top four community colleges in the nation by the Aspen Institute. Receiving the designation of finalist with distinction for the Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence. And whereas President Perugi chaired the search committee for the position of Vice Chancellor for Student Development and served on the search committee for the President of the College of Staten Island, both in 2006, and was appointed by Chancellor Matthew Goldstein to chair the task force of CUNY Community College Presidents as well as the Haiti Relief Task Force in 2010. And whereas President Perugi originally joined the City University of New York in 1974 at York College, where she developed and directed the Community Learning Center and moved to the Office of Academic Affairs in 1984. Assuming the position of University Associate Dean for Adult and, and Continuing Education in 1986, whereas she was president of Marymount Manhattan College from 1990 to 2001 and served as president of the Central Park Conservancy for three years before rejoining CUNY. And whereas President Perugi is chairperson emerita of the Women's Commission for Refugees, Women and Children and chairperson of the Havens Relief Fund Society and also serves as a director on the boards of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and the Brooklyn Economic Development Corporation, as well as a member of the Women's Forum and an advisory board of the Student World Assembly. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Dr. Regina Perugi for her exemplary dedication and distinguished leadership as president of Kingsborough Community College. Uh, Regina, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I'm speechless. No, thank you very, very much. It's been a, a pleasure being part of the City University of New York for 23 years. Uh, it's taught me a lot. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to have a career that's been more rewarding than I could have ever imagined. Uh, working with students, there's nothing better than working with students and seeing them achieve their goals through this great university. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now call on uh, Trustee Peter Pantaleo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is resolution number 11, a resolution, thank you, of appreciation for Stephen Shepard. Whereas Stephen Shepard was named Dean of the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism in November 2004 by the Board of Trustees upon the recommendation of Chancellor Matthew Goldstein, and whereas Dean Shepard hit the ground running in April 2005, even prior to the establishment of the Graduate School of Journalism in 2006, by leading a successful effort to garner $4 million in student scholarship support from members of the Sulzberger family, and whereas during his tenure at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, he assembled an outstanding faculty and student body and oversaw the establishment of the Toe Knight Foundation Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism, 
through matching and other grants totaling $10 million, as well as the creation of the NY City News Service and the Center for Community and Ethnic Media, and whereas prior to joining the City University of New York, he was the Editor-in-Chief of Business Week from 1984 to 2005, worked as a senior editor for National Affairs at Newsweek and editor of the Saturday Review, and was adjunct professor at the Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism, where he co-founded and directed, uh, was co-founder and director of the school's prestigious Knight Baghat Fellowship in Economic and Business Journalism, a member of its Board of Visitors and a member of the Curriculum Reform Committee, and whereas Dean Shepard was introduced, inducted into the American Society of Magazine Editors Hall of Fame and received a Gerald M. Loeb Foundation Lifetime Achievement Award for Business Journalism, the Henry Johnson Fisher Award, the magazine publishing industry's highest honor, and the President's Award from the Overseas Press Club, and served as president of the American Society of Magazine Editors and is currently a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Overseas Press Club, and the Century Association. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Stephen Shepard for his dedication, creativity, and exceptional leadership as Dean of the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Please, an ovation. <laughs> Let the record show. Steve, do you want to say a few words? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, unlike uh, the Chancellor and uh, President Perugi, I will be here until the end of December. So I enter this lame duck status, which is um, <laughs> curiously called um, a forgotten but not gone. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a latecomer to CUNY. I came here after a long career in the magazine world. And um, I've got to say, this has been the most meaningful experience of my professional life, the opportunity to uh, start the first publicly supported graduate school of journalism, not just in New York City, but in the entire Northeast was really very, very gratifying, uh, especially to this city college graduate. Uh, and also to start a school at a very critical time for the journalism profession when it was really rather difficult and still is to figure out what journalism education ought to be, much less what journalism ought to be. Um, so I'm really very, very grateful for the opportunity um, given to me to do this. I've had a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you all at least till December 31st. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Dr. William Pollard is out of town, but I would like the record uh, to reflect our appreciation. Uh, may I call on Trustee Charles Shorter? A resolution of appreciation for President William Pollard. Whereas Dr. Pollard was named president of Medgar Evers College in June 2009 by the Board of Trustees upon the recommendation of Chancellor Matthew Goldstein, and whereas during his tenure at Medgar Evers College, President Pollard consistently engaged students through town hall meetings and special drop-in hours, met with community leaders, and worked with faculty, staff, and alumni in order to ensure that the college remained first and foremost a student-oriented campus. And whereas he advanced the college's academic mission by hiring additional faculty, strengthening accountability measures, working to increase the student space on campus, developing co-curricular vehicles that foster academic excellence, and increasing the student retention rate. And whereas President Pollard, a nationally prominent educator whose career spans nearly 30 years, has demonstrated his deep commitment to public higher education through his outstanding work in senior administrative positions, including Vice President, of the Office for Access and the Advancement of Public Black Colleges and Universities for the National Association for State Universities and Land-Grant Colleges, and President of the University of the District of Columbia, among others. 
And whereas he was appointed co-chair of the New York City Haitian Community Hope and Healing Fund Advisory Committee and recognized as a social work pioneer by the National Association of Social <coughs> Workers both in 2010, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Dr. William L. Pollard for his highly dedicated and determined leadership as president of Medgar Evers College. I'll second the motion. Uh, all those in favor, please applaud. <laughs> Let the record show that all these resolutions were adopted by acclamation. On behalf of the board, I would like to congratulate Chancellor Goldstein on receiving the first ever Outstanding Education Leadership Award by the Chinatown Partnership at its sixth annual benefit and awards gala this past Thursday. This was in recognition of the exceptional work that Chancellor uh, and his team have done over the last decade uh, in leading uh, the City University. Besides uh, a beautiful Chinese scroll, an abacus was presented to the Chancellor, uh, who, admitted, who immediately put it to use at the podium, demonstrating uh, his mathematical skills on the world's first green computer, uh, invented by the Chinese many thousands of years ago. Uh, on behalf of the board, I would also like to congratulate Interim Chancellor-designate William Kelly on being elected Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation at its recent meeting, where he has served as a member since 2009. As we all know, the Guggenheim Awards remain the gold standard of scholarly uh, achievement. Uh, Chancellor designate Kelly's leadership in this position will bring luster to CUNY's enduring commitment uh, to academic excellence. On behalf of the board, I would like to extend warmest congratulations to Trustee Frieda Foster, who was reappointed by Governor Cuomo and confirmed by the State Senate to a six-year term uh, on the board. Trustee Carol Robles Roman was reappointed by Mayor Bloomberg and confirmed by the State Senate to a two-year term uh, on the board. And Trustee Charles Shorter, who was reappointed by Mayor Bloomberg and confirmed by the State Senate for a seven-year uh, term on the board. <laughs> Further congratulations are in order for Trustee Carol Robles Roman for her excellent interview with CNN about women and education uh, in relation to the new documentary, Girls Rising. Good. I want to thank the trustees who have agreed to serve with me and Vice Chair Philip Berry on the search committee uh, for a new chancellor. They are trustees Valerie Beal, Wellington Chen, Rita DiMartino, Brian Oberfell, Peter Pantaleo, Carol Robles Roman, and Charles Shorter, Kafui uh, Kuaku, and Terrence Martell. Presidents Lisa Koyuko and Felix Matos Rodriguez will serve as the presidential representatives. Please note that City College alumnus Cy Sternberg, City College Distinguished Professor Robert Passwell, and Student Representative Jennifer Fernandez have also been appointed uh, to this uh, search committee. Uh, the search will be assisted by Isaacson Miller, a highly regarded national executive search firm uh, devoted to recruiting uh, exceptional educational leaders, and will be further assisted by Dr. Jonathan Cole, former provost and dean of faculties uh, of Columbia University, and currently the John Mitchell Mason Professor uh, at Columbia. We'll have our first uh, search committee meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank uh, so many of my fellow trustees who represented the board at various May and June 2013 CUNY uh, commencements uh, that have taken place over the past uh, several weeks. You represented uh, the university with, with great distinction. The board <clears throat> held its Bronx a borough hearing uh, in conjunction with the public hearing for the June 2013 calendar 
On Monday, June 17, 2013, uh, Trustee Valerie Beal chaired the hearing, which took place at Hostos Community College. The hearings were attended by Trustees Rita DiMartino and Wellington Chen, members of the Chancellery and CUNY's Bronx College presidents. On behalf of the board, I want to extend our condolences to the wife and family of Nobel laureate Dr. Jerome Carl, a 1937 graduate of City College of New York, who with his City College classmate, Herbert Hauptman, won the 1985 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their research uh, discoveries in X-ray crystallography, now used daily by scientists uh, all over the world. With his wife, Dr. Isabella Carl, he also worked on the atom bomb uh, Manhattan Project, and he continued his research at the Naval Research Laboratory un until he retired at age 90. May I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The John J. College, John J. College Professor of uh, Elise Wasterson was elected to the presidency of the American Anthropological Association. She will serve as president-elect for two years, followed by a two-year term as president and Professor of Psychology, Kathy Spatz Windham, received the 2013 Edward Sutherland Award given by the American Society of Criminology in recognition of outstanding contributions in the field of criminology. Congratulations. City College uh, Spitzer School of Architecture de designated Professor Michael Sorkin won a 2013 Cooper Hewitt National Design Award in the Design Mind category and will be honored in a ceremony by First Lady Michelle Obama. Professor of English Carla Capetti received a 2013-2014 Fulbright Scholar Award for teaching and research in Italy. And science and engineering librarian Claudia Lascar was named the Distinguished Biomedical and Life Science Librarian of 2013 by the Biomedical and Life Science Division of the Special Libraries Associations. Congratulations. Baruch College won the 2013 Case National Award for overall performance by a comprehensive public institution for its successful 150 million Baruch Means Business fundraising campaign, which came in over goal at 157.1 million. Congratulations to Baruch. And finally, LaGuardia Community College's LaGuardia and Wagner Archives celebrated the digitization of nearly one million city council documents that are now available to the public. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd like now to call on Trustee Kate Vasili to announce student and alumni honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Students Jose Cardones of Lehman College and Razia Khan of Queens College have been selected for the 2013 Math for America Fellowships. Each will receive a $40,000 stipend and full tuition scholarship for master's degrees in secondary mathematics education. Congratulations. More than 20 outstanding CUNY students in 2013 won National Science Foundation awards of $126,000 each for graduate study in the sciences. This surpasses the 16 winners CUNY-wide last year. Congratulations. 12 Baruch College School of Public Affairs students and alumni have received offers to join Governor Cuomo's administration as Excelsior Service Fellows. The initial appointment of two years has retention opportunities for outstanding performers. The fellowship pays $70,000 per year, and School of Public Affairs alumna Alejandra Seja was appointed to the new appointed the new director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanics. Congratulations. Medgar Evers College recent graduate, Dalisha Bella, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree, will move immediately into the doctoral program at SUNY Albany School of Public Health's prestigious Environmental Health Sciences program. 
Congratulations. Five City College Grove School of Engineering students, Mohammed Arafat, Joniard Kamarista, Bakshir and Kunir Paneri, and Wakar Iqbal won the $50,000 Cayley Prize for entrepreneurship for their virtual queuing product, NextQ. John Jay College student, Lanicia Lewis Kirkwood, is one of the 20 nationwide to receive a competitive Charles B. Rangel International Affairs Fellowship. Congratulations. LaGuardia Community College students, Byron and Christian Gwina Nanska and Estella Melendez winning entry in the Federal Reserve's Bank Financial Awareness Video Competition was praised by CNBC's Susie Orman on her nationally syndicated show. Their video powerfully urges students to watch their spending habits. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you have a list of grants and gifts received by the university uh, since our April 29, 2013 uh, meetings. Uh, the list is available uh, on the table as well as in your calendar book. I'd like to now call on uh, Chancellor Goldstein to present his uh, last update to the board on activities at the university. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. I'd like uh, first to uh, congratulate our presidents and uh, faculty and staff uh, and their students, certainly our trustees, for their participation in our latest uh, commencement season. Uh, I had the privilege of, as I do each year, of uh, speaking at each of the commencements, but this year was particularly wonderful for me given that I gave the commencement address at my alma mater, CCNY, 50 years after I graduated in 1963. And then it was Martin Luther King Jr. who gave our commencement address, so he was a rather hard act to follow. Uh, we did confer, Mr. Chairman, 48,500 degrees, the largest in the history of this university, and that's something we should all be deeply proud of. I join the chairman in congratulating trustees Frida Foster, Carol Robles Ramon, and Charles Shorter on their reappointments. You've been exquisitely helpful, trustees, and we're so delighted that you will continue to bring your, um, your wisdom to um, the challenges that this university inevitably will face. Uh, on a going forward basis. The legislation, uh, legislative session concluded just this past Saturday. Two items impact CUNY directly. The first, uh, last week, the governor and leaders of the Assembly and Senate announced new legislation to create Startup New York. This uh, in initiative uh, incentivizes companies to bring their early stage ventures to New York by offering new businesses the opportunity to operate completely tax-free while also partnering with higher education institutions. For CUNY, the legislation establishes a tax-free community on a campus in each borough in an area of economic distress. These opportunities may include vacant land or space in buildings on the CUNY campus or any other business incubator with a bona fide affiliation to the campus. We will continue to work with state officials and our campuses on this new venture <coughs> in the upcoming fiscal year. In addition, both houses adopted legislation that provides <coughs> government agencies, CUNY and SUNY, access to information from the state's wage record system specifically the quarterly reporting by employers of wages paid to individuals for unemployment insurance tracking purposes. We will be able to request information regarding specific students or graduates or groups of students or graduates. The information may not be published except in aggregate form so that no individual uh, information will become public. This is a very significant step forward for CUNY in terms of our ability to understand labor market outcomes for our graduates 
and evaluate, improve, and, and, and evaluate and improve the quality of our programs to meet workforce demands. The new New York Education Reform Commission has launched phase two of its work. Phase two of the commission begins with a series of public symposiums around the state. I will be uh, leading a discussion about uh, readiness uh, for college as we go into uh, phase two. The next meeting of the New York City Regional Economic Development Council will be held tomorrow at John Jay College. Thank you, Jeremy, for hosting the meeting. The next round of competitions will be initiated on a statewide basis. Phase one of CUNY's solar work for New York State uh, is complete. This is being done as part of the governor's New York Sun Initiative, created to drive growth in the solar industry and to make solar affordable for all New Yorkers. With respect to the city, yesterday the mayor and speaker Quinn announced a budget agreement for fiscal year 2014. Although the details of this agreement are still being ironed out, it is our expectation that we will have a record year in terms of getting support for many of our high priority initiatives like the Black Male Initiative, Citizenship Now, and Adult Literacy. Mr. Chairman, I want to give a particular shout out to John Katowski. Uh, without John's work, uh, I don't think that we would have gotten the kind of consideration that we have from uh, the city council. He literally camps out there seven days a week and is doggedly about um, providing information and uh, nudging the council until they give up and say, okay, we'll support CUNY in ways that uh, we are deeply uh, in his debt. I don't, know if John, I don't know if John is in the audience, but if he is, thank you, John. Down at City Hall. Uh, he's down at City Hall, making sure everything is well. Earlier today, there was a New York City uh, Council Higher Education Committee hearing regarding student loan debt. I would like to thank University Associate Dean for enrollment, uh, management James Murphy for testifying on behalf of the university. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, we are now well into the implementation phase of the Pathways Initiative. Uh, thousands of continuing students have so far opted into uh, uh, the Pathways uh, general education framework rather than to stay with the original general education framework under which these students entered CUNY uh, initially. Approximately 10,000 students who will be entering CUNY for the first time in fall of 2010 have already registered for Pathway courses. So far, the approximate number of enrollments in fall 2013 pathway courses is 210,000. Over 2,000 pathways common core courses have been approved by the board. Faculty committees have identified the courses leading into 10 of the largest transformations so that students can take those courses at any campus that offers that major and transfer without losing major credit. Every campus now has a Pathways website to inform students about Pathways and what is available on their campus. This is in addition to the Central Pathways website. Training of advisors and modification of software systems are ongoing. A student rights and responsibilities document has been developed that is being widely distributed so that students know what they are supposed to receive under Pathways and how to proceed if they believe that Pathways policies are not being fulfilled. After almost three years of hard work addressing the transfer credit issue at CUNY, we are completely on track to affect Pathways in September 2013 in accordance with the board's 2011 resolution. 
I did, want not, I did not want to leave this university until this was done, and it is. So I am deeply grateful to so many people, especially our faculty and staff who have worked so hard. But Mr. Chairman and members of the board, if I did not acknowledge the incredible work of Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost Lexa Logue, who was indefatigable, focused, uh, trained uh, to keep the train moving in the right direction, I would be missing a great opportunity to applaud and support my partner, Lexa Logue. So thank you for your We could not have gotten there without you, Lexa. We will continue to monitor carefully the implementation of Pathways as we move into September, along with conducting the first uh, reviews of Pathways. Uh, Bill Kelly and I have had several discussions uh, about that, and um, he's ready to uh, take that initiative. And before I get to anything else, Bill, I just want to say how delighted I am that you're going to be in my seat on the 18th floor of 205 East 42nd Street. The jelly beans are waiting for you. Uh, the books are on the bookshelf. Uh, the staff uh, and the chancellery are greatly await uh, your uh, coming uh, on uh, July 1st. The university is going to be very, very well served. And I think we're all uh, in debt uh, for you accepting this great responsibility. Congratulations to President Scott Evenbeck on an outstanding event held at June 18th to celebrate the naming of the Stellar and Charles Gutman Community College. I'm pleased also to note that a recently released cost-benefit study for our accelerated study in associate programs, ASAP, initiative indicates that as a consequence of the hugely increased graduation rates of ASAP, there are enormous benefits to taxpayers, including increased tax revenues and savings in social services, public health, and criminal justice, as well as enormous benefits to the individual student in the form of significantly increased lifetime earnings. ASP now has excellent proof of its ability to at least double associate degree graduation rates. Although ASAP cost more per student, it cost far less per graduate. The data and analyses of support of ASAP are without precedent in the history of higher education. There was a wonderful event held at CCNY on May 21st to celebrate the reinstatement of the ROTC program at CUNY. General Colin Powell gave very eloquent remarks. I'd like to commend President Lisa Koiko, Executive Vice uh, Chancellor Alan Dobrin, Senior University Dean Robert Tachik, and all those involved at CCNY, your college, Medgar Evers, and elsewhere at CUNY in putting this program back on the rolls. At this time, I'd like to recognize two CUNY public safety officers that are here with us today, Mr. Chairman. Timothy Grampry of John Jay College and Bradley Tweed of the College of Staten Island, who recently helped save the lives of two people. Officer Grampry put himself in harm's way when he tackled a, per a per perpetrator and wrestled a knife out of his hand, saving a student from being further attacked. For his display of heroism, he has been awarded the CUNY Public Safety Commendation Medal. Officer Tweed performed CPR on an elderly man who collapsed while on campus during the CI CSI's commencement. After receiving chest compressions, the man's pulse returned and was taken to the hospital by ambulance. For his quick actions, Officer Tweed has been awarded the CUNY Public Safety Rescue Medal. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, 
These two great public servants are here with us today and deserve <laughs> I'm almost done, Mr. Chancellor, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm pleased to recognize uh, Vice Chancellor Frank, Frank Sanchez and the Central Office Student Affairs, who recent work with the Gift of Lo Life Bone Marrow Foundation directly resulted in a bone marrow match, saving the life of a 67-year-old woman suffering from acute leukemia. Frank. Thank you for leading our bone marrow and blood drive efforts on our campuses. And lastly, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, President Felix Matos Rodriguez, was, uh, who received the Academic Excellence Award at the Puerto Rican Bar Association Scholarships 56th Anniversary Gala on May 9th. Congratulations, Phalo. President Jennifer Rabb on receiving the Humanitarian Award from Kennedy Child Study Center on May 16th and for being selected by Crane's New York Businesses as one of the 50 most powerful women in New York. Senior Vice Chancellor and Board Secretary Jay Hershenson on receiving the Effective Leadership Award at the Latino Center on Aging's 21st annual banquet last week. President Jeremy Travis, who has been named to a new advisory group created by Chief Justice Lipman, and President Ricardo Fernandez, who will be honored by the New York Immigration Coalition on Thursday, June 27th. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Are there, com are there comments or questions to the Chancellor on his uh, report. All right, we'll now proceed to policy items requiring a vote. I will introduce the uh, uh, Chancellor's, I will move the adoption of the Chancellor's University Report for June 24th, 2013. You have a copy of this report on the table. May I have a second? second. Are there any questions for the Chancellor on the University Report? If not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed abstention? Report is adopted. I'd like to move the approval of the minutes <clears throat> of the regular board meeting and executive session of April 29th, 2013. You have a copy of the draft minutes behind uh, section two in your board books. Are there any uh, revisions or changes that anyone wants to propose? If not, may I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any, any opposed abstention? The minutes are, are adopted. Uh, we'll turn now to uh, our committee reports, and we'll hear first uh, from the Committee on Fiscal Matters, uh, Trustee Joe Loda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investment met in a joint session on June 3rd, 2013. Following approval of the minutes of the Fiscal Affairs Committee meeting of October 8th, the Subcommittee on Investments was convened. After approval of the minutes of the meeting of the Subcommittee on April 8th, Chief Investment Officer Janet Crone gave an investment update on the university's portfolio performance through April 30th of this year. The Subcommittee was then adjourned to go into executive session where the university's consultants, Cambridge Associates, reported on the university's investment objectives and policies. Following Cambridge's departure from the room and after discussion on their contract, which expires on July 1st of this year, the subcommittee resumed in public session where it proceeded to act on two resolutions. The first to approve an amendment to the university's investment policy, revising the asset allocations, and the second to extend Cambridge Associates' contract for another five years. The Committee on Fiscal Affairs was then reconvened and proceeded to approve the following resolutions. Calendar item 3A is a resolution requesting that the trustees authorize the university to adopt a schedule of academic excellence fees 
for graduate students in Hunter Bellevue School of Nursing Program, College of Staten Island Nursing Program, and the Lehman College Nursing Program, effective with the fall 2013 semester, as follows. $500 per semester for residential full-time students, $50 per credit for resident part-time students, and $90 per credit for non-resident students. Uh, the academic excellence fee will enable the colleges to improve the quality and level of student support services, to keep pace with the ever-changing nursing practices and technologies, and to enhance the quality and market position of our graduate degree programs. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. I'll second the motion. Are there questions on item 3A? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? 3A is adopted. Calendar item 3B requests that the trustees approve a resolution to charge non-New York State veterans the same tuition rate as New York State residents for a period of 18 months from the first date of attendance at a CUNY college. The Veterans Administration has ruled that veterans attending public colleges are only eligible to be reimbursed at the resident tuition rate. By virtue of this resolution, if a veteran does not establish New York State residency after 18 months, he or she will no longer be entitled to pay the resident tuition rate. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3B. I'll second the motion. Are there questions on the uh, veterans' tuition rates? Not all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? That carries. Calendar item 3C is a resolution requesting that the trustees accept a gift of $1 million from the SC Group to establish a revolving loan fund to support green programs. The revolving fund will enable the university and its colleges to realize cost savings and environmental benefits of efficiency enhancements to its facilities. The SC Group is a private foundation which makes grants and loans to various nonprofit organizations with a focus on the elderly, the environment, and education. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar item 3C. I'll second that. Are there questions? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That, that's adopted. Calendar item uh, 3D is a resolution requesting that the trustees approve the university's revised tuition and fee manual and authorize the chancellery to revise the manual as may be necessary and appropriate in the future. This manual will serve as the university's policy statement regarding tuition fee matters. This resolution also requests that the trustees approve the increase in several miscellaneous fees uh, commencing with the fall 2013 semester to defray costs associated with these activities. A listing of these fees is included in the resolution. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar item 3D. I second the motion. Are, are there questions for the committee? Not all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed aye. abstentions? That is adopted. Calendar item 3E is a resolution requesting that the trustees approve an increase in the technology fee from $100 to $125 per semester for full-time students and from $50 to $62.50 per semester for part-time students and to approve the use of the technology fee for enterprise academic and administrative computing services. This increase will be effective at the senior colleges beginning with the spring 2014 semester and effective the beginning um, and effective beginning in the fall of 2015 for the community colleges. The increase to the fee will generate an additional $7.4 million annually at the senior colleges as a result of additional state support provided to the community colleges for fiscal year 2014 and considering the tuition increase effective for fall 2013 semester, the technology fee increase will not be implemented at the community colleges for the academic years 2013-14 and for 2014-15 but will be effective in the beginning, um, starting in the fall uh, 2015 semester. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar item 3E. I'll second the motion. Are there questions about the technology fee? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? That's adopted. 
Calendar item 3F is a resolution requesting that the trustees approve a one-year extension that will ensure continuity of external auditing services at, as the university completes the public solicitation process for audit and tax services for fiscal years 2014 through 2018. The cost of additional years of service shall not exceed a total estimated cost of $815,000. The financial audit services provided by KPMG support the university's statutory requirement to produce consolidated university financial statements each fiscal year. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3F. Second that. Are there questions about the financial audit? Yes, Peter. Chair, I just want to uh, indicate that I will need to abstain due to a conflict. My law firm represents the. All right. Uh, any any further comments, questions? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. Uh, uh, one abstention noted. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to present calendar items G, I, J, and K together, since they're all resolutions pertaining to amendments to the university's investment policy that have been reviewed and approved by the Subcommittee on Investment. Item G revises the asset allocation. Item 1 confirms that a 4.5 percent appropriation for the funds in the portfolio for fiscal year ending uh, June 30, 2014. Item J amends the policy to permit the Committee on Fiscal Affairs and its Subcommittee on Investments to delegate authority to the Senior Vice Chancellor of Budget, Finance, and Fiscal Policy as it relates to the current policy concerning decisions to make marketable and non-marketable alternative investments as circumstances warrant. And item K revises the spending policy to permit a more efficient process of implementing uh, such policy, as well as to clarify the policy in terms of compliance uh, with New York State law and best, practice, best practices in accounting. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and the adoption of calendar items 3G, 3I, 3J, and 3K. Are there any questions about these changes to the investment policy? I got more. If not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That all those are carried. And calendar item 3H is a resolution requesting that the Board of Trustees of uh, the University authorize the General Counsel to execute a contract on behalf of the Office of University Controller to purchase investment consulting services from Cambridge Associates LLC without competitive solicitation and pursuant to law and university regulations. The term of the contract shall be up to five years. Cambridge's current contract expires on July 1, 2013, and services are being continued in the best interest of the university. Mr. Chairman, I approve uh, the adoption of calendar item 3H. Uh, I'll second the motion. Any questions about the Cambridge contract? Yes, a quick question, please, Mr. Chair. The, um, the fee noted here is going to be the greater of 200000 an amount based on a percentage of the value of university assets. Has that, has that percentage been established, or is that already somewhere else? That percentage has been established. We can get that to you. I'm sorry? We can get that percentage to you. Thank you. Any other further questions? Are you ready? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That is adopted. Following the approval of all of these action items by the committee, Associate Vice Chancellor Matthew Sapienza gave us a report on the 2013-2014 city executive budget. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Trustee Loda. Uh, I would like now to call on the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, Trustee Valerie Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will now present for the Board's approval the items that the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration considered at its meeting on June 3rd. Our agenda consisted of a number of governance matters, naming opportunities and the appointment of several distinguished professors and for purposes of expediency I will take some matters out of order in order to present them as a group for approval. I will begin with calendar item 4B, amendments to the governance plan of the City College of New York. The college wishes to revise the governance plan of the Graduate Student Association and change the name to the Graduate Student Council. In addition, the allocation of seats on the Student Council 
is being changed to distribute seats more equally among the different schools and divisions. The proposed amendment was based on student-led initiatives and will modernize and improve the graduate student organization's activities on campus. The amendments have been approved by the CCNY Faculty Senate and are recommended by the college president. Mr. Chair, I present item 4B for the board's consideration. I'll second that. Are there questions about the governance amendments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? That's adopted. Calendar item 4D amends the governance plan of New York City College of Technology to clarify the roles of officers of the College Council and its various committees, revise the duties of standing committees, create a new committee on technology, and revise the charge and functioning of the personal personnel appeals committee. The changes also include provisions that bring the governance plan into compliance with university policies on academic integrity, faculty student disciplinary committees, and the resolution of student complaints. These amendments have been approved by the College Council and, and are recommended by the President. Mr. Chair, I present item 4D for the Board's approval. I'll second that item. Are there questions about these uh, governance plan amendments? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? 4D carries. Item 4H amends the governance plan of the Graduate School and University Center to allow the appointment of faculty directly to master programs and to extend the guidelines and criteria for faculty appointments to include both doctoral and master's programs. This change is necessitated by the increase in the number of new master's programs at the Graduate Center. The changes have been approved by the Graduate Council and are recommended by the President. Mr. Chair, I present item 4H for the Board's approval. Uh, I'll second that. Are there questions about the Graduate School's uh, Governance Amendment? Not. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That is adopted. Items 4A, 4C, 4E, 4F, and 4I concern naming opportunities at a number of our colleges, which I will present as a group. I would like to note that the monetary gifts associated with several of these matters total nearly $6 million. The, faculty, the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration is pleased to recommend their approval. They are as follows. The Barry Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema at Brooklyn College. Incorporation and naming of the City College Center for the Arts Incorporation. The Charles F. Bova Senior Veterans Memorial at Queensborough Community College. The Milton Basin Performing Arts Center at York College. And the Richard Kohler Class of 73 Lecture Hall at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Mr. Chair, I present items 4A, 4C, 4E, 4F, and 4I for the Board's approval. I'll second those. Are there questions on these naming items? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Those are adopted. Item 4G designates five new distinguished professors effective September 1, 2013. The committee has reviewed each of these outstanding appointments and is pleased to recommend their approval. They are Dr. Daniel Greenberger, Distinguished Professor of Physics at the City College of New York. Dr. Jeremy Kahn, Distinguished Professor of Mathematics at the Graduate Center. Dr. Megan Vaughn, Distinguished Professor of History at the Graduate Center. Dr. Joshua Freeman, Distinguished Professor of History at Queens College. Dr. Yun Ping Dang Zhang, Distinguished Professor of Mathematics at Queens College. Mr. Chair, I am very pleased to present these appointments for the Board's approval. I'll second those uh, appointments. Uh, any questions about the Distinguished Professorships? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those are all approved. Mr. Chair, I'm delighted that three of our new distinguished professors are here today. 
I therefore would like to invite President Koiko to introduce Professor Greenberger. Then Provost Chase Robinson will introduce Professor Kahn, after which President Meiskin will read a statement from Professor Friedman. Yes. It is indeed with great pleasure that I present to the Board of Trustees the nomination, um, and was just approved, of Professor Daniel M. Greenberger as the University Distinguished Professor in the Physics Department of the City College of New York. Professor Greenberger is currently the Mark W. Zemansky Professor of Physics at City College and has established an international reputation as a leading quantum physics theorist. His scholarly reputation emanates from his seminal work on the GHZ theorem, named for the initials of the three scientists, including Professor Greenberger, who published their findings in 1989. This celebrated theorem is ranked second only to the famous Bell's theorem of 1964, which launched the great debate concerning quantum mechanics versus local realism. To put Professor Greenberger's findings in their historical perspective, the initial paper of, on quantum entanglements was authored by Albert Einstein, Boris Podolowski, and Nathan Rosen in 1935. The GHZ theorem made a critical extension to measurements involving three particles after John Stuart Bell had shown that quantum theory predicts violations of an upper limit for pairs of particles. As for Professor Greenberger's role in this seminal work with his colleagues, it is generally agreed that of the three authors, Professor Greenberger uh, conceived the idea and was the leader in executing it. As to its effect on the world of physics, Dr. Seth Lloyd, director of the Keck MIT Center for Extreme Quantum Information Theory, states that the impact of this work has dramatically transformed the way scientists think of quantum mechanics. In addition to the strong support for this designation um, by administrative officials and faculty, overwhelmingly positive letters were received from international leaders in the field, including three Nobel laureates and eight National Academy of Science members. So it is truly my great pleasure to introduce to you a brilliant scientist who is also an extremely humble man, and I'm very privileged, Dr. Daniel Greenberg. Well, thank you, Dr. Kaliko, for the uh, really wonderful introduction. And I'd like to also thank the uh, Board of Trustees, and I, for it's really quite an honor, and I hope I live up to it. Uh, when, uh, at the beginning of the century, when uh, Einstein and uh, Niels Bohr, uh, two of the really great intellectuals of the 20th century, uh, got into their debate over the meaning of quantum mechanics, uh, nobody thought that one could experimentally uh, do anything about it. And uh, when I, I read about it as an undergraduate, and I went to my advisor and asked if I could get into the field, and he shook his head and said, uh, he said, there's an ancient uh, proverb that when elephants fight, the grass gets trampled. <laughs> and so he said, you, you let the elephants fight this one out, and you just stay out of the way. And, and uh, that was good advice until about 1964, when John Bell proved a theorem which showed that, in fact, one could experimentally do something in this field. And as a result, the field has progressed enormously, and today, uh, today you, there are, you, there's all kinds of experiments on quantum computers, quantum cryptography, quantum information, and so on, to the point where uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Professor Zeilinger, uh, my colleague in Vienna, and myself uh, set up a, uh, a group within the American Physical Society on quantum information theory, and today it's a it's just about ready for division status. And uh, so it's, it's been a great uh, honor to, uh, to sort of be at the forefront of, of, a, of a newly developing field. And, uh, and I, I'd really like to thank everyone involved, including uh, uh, the, uh, Dr. Koiko and her staff and my wonderful department for uh, helping me achieve this honor. Thank you very much.
Provost Chase Robinson. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here and great pleasure to introduce Jeremy Kahn. By most recent count, the university has about 151 distinguished professors. The Graduate Center is privileged to be home for, by most recent count, 61 of them. Jeremy is the most um, recent addition to um, a really an illustrious faculty. Dr. Khan received his BA in mathematics from Harvard in 1991 and his PhD in mathematics from the University of California, Berkeley in 1995. He is currently a professor of mathematics at Brown. An extraordinarily precocious and gifted mathematician and scholar with an international reputation, his seminal research focuses on complex dynamics, complex analysis, and hyperbolic geometry. Please don't ask me for explanations of what those are. <laughs> In recent years, Jeremy has produced an impressive number of papers in the most prestigious, the most significant journals in the field, with four papers published in the Annals of Mathematics. As one of his reviewers put it, a respective number for an entire career for a first-class mathematician would be two or three. Many have none. Jeremy's significant stature and global, re global reputation are broadly recognized, and indeed, Professor Khan, in collaboration with Professor Vladimir Markovich of the California Institute of Technology, won the coveted 2012 Clay Research Award from the Clay Mathematics Institute for their pioneering contributions, work proving the surface subgroup theorem and the Aaron Price conjecture. These are truly spectacular accomplishments, one reviewer wrote, and by, this, and by themselves, qualify Jeremy for a distinguished professor <coughs> chair at any department of mathematics. Jeremy, welcome to the University of New York. Thank you. So I grew up in New York on the Upper West Side, and my mother went to Hunter College, and my father went to City. And I grew up in a house full of books and thoughts and the love of learning. And I've always believed New York City to be the center of the intellectual universe. And in the center of New York is the Graduate Center, and in the middle of the Graduate Center is the Department of Mathematics. <laughs> and I'm glad that we're in the middle because we're not an empirical science, we're not writing poetry, and we're not making history, although we're a product of our history. We in mathematics are the most rarefied of the intellectual world, and we're the most rigorous and the most determined to find the very final answer, the very final answer to the questions that we can answer. So it is a great pleasure and an honor and a privilege to join you here as a distinguished professor in the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. President Meissen. Yes, it is especially fitting that historian Joshua Freeman should be named Distinguished Professor by the City University of New York, as there are few people who know as much about our city and City University as Josh Freeman. Uh, Dr. Freeman is one of those rare popular historians who receives high praise from his colleagues for his thoroughness and scholarly rigor. Uh, having just read myself his recent magnum opus, American Empire, I can also tell you uh, Dr. Freeman is also a graceful writer and a brilliant storyteller. Uh, besides his book, he's a prolific scholar whose works have appeared in The Nation, New York Times, Dissent, New Labor Forum, many other journals. He's served at Queens College, the Murphy Institute, City University, and many different capacities, including two terms as executive officer of the PhD history program at the Graduate Center. Now, as you heard, unfortunately, Dr. Freeman could not be here today, so he asked me to read on his behalf a brief statement that he prepared. I want to thank the trustees for this honor. The City University of New York is a great institution for its mission, its students and faculty, its administration and staff. 
I am delighted to join the ranks of the extraordinary distinguished professors at Queens College and distinguished professors of history throughout the university. They are scholars unsurpassed anywhere in the country. I am humbled now to be among them. I want to thank my colleagues at Queens College for their support, especially the past and present chairs of the History Department, Frank Warren and Joel Allen, and President James Meiskens, whose backing over the years I greatly appreciate. Under his leadership, Queens College has valued research and scholarship even as it carries out the heavy responsibilities of teaching. I also want to thank William Kelly for the steadfast support he gave me at the Graduate Center while he served as Provost and President, and Dean John Mogulescu, whom I have had the pleasure of working with at the School of Professional Studies through my affiliation with the Joseph Murphy Institute. I can think of no other institution in the country where a faculty member can teach as broad a range of students as I have, from undergraduates just out of high school to adult workers returning to school after many years to doctoral students from all over the world while being surrounded by such fine scholars. Nothing could make me prouder than to be Distinguished Professor of History. Thank you. Yang? Yes, uh, uh, we have another distinguished professor, uh, Yunping Zhang. Uh, his research investigates key issues in the field of chaos systems, a field that touches all of us, as it can be used to examine the flow of water or the slow crawl of the rush hour traffic. It can explain chemical reactions or the puzzling fluctuations of stock prices. Our understanding of such chaotic behavior has deepened considerably in the last 20 years as Dr. Zhang's insights have been the foundation for much of our new understanding. <clears throat> His work has been described as elegant, exceptional, and he himself has been called a remarkable researcher and a truly international figure. A terrific ambassador for Queens College, Dr. Zhang has been a visiting professor in China, France, England, Germany, and Switzerland as well as an invited speaker at dozens of conferences around the world. He's clearly one of the leading mathematicians of his generation, and I am proud to say that such a brilliant researcher earned his doctoral degree at the City University of New York. It's my great pleasure to introduce Queens College's first distinguished professor of mathematics, Yangping Chang. So uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Chancellor Matthew Gorenstein and President uh, Jim Mayaski and uh, Board of Trustees for this honor. Uh, City, City University of New York was the very first place I call uh, my home uh, when I came to the United States of America 28 years ago. Actually, I've been staying here almost all of my life with some uh, visiting some other place. Uh, my research field is uh, mathematics with uh, spe sp specialization in chaotic uh, dynamic systems. I'm also interested in the complex analysis and the thermodynamic formalism. Um, I have been fortunate to be in the mathematics department both at Queens College and at the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, where my former mentor and uh, now colleagues I uh, ha have consistently encouraged and uh, supported my work. Uh, Professor Danny Sullivan's uh, unique view in mathematics uh, influenced my research in almost every aspect. Um, Professor Richard uh, uh, Sachstetter was always helpful when I needed. Uh, with uh, Dick's uh, passing a few years ago, um, I would like to use this uh, chance to memory his uh, kindness, guidance, and encouragement. Um, I would like also thanks to Professor Fred Gunner and uh, uh, Professor Linda King for their long time support uh, of my research. Um, I also immensely gra uh, grateful for, for my uh, student, Gaofi Zhang, Krista McCarthy, Zhe Wang, Haifeng Chu, uh, Mike Beck. Uh, Tao Chen and Yun Chun Hu, and uh, Professor Sh uh, Sudan Mitra for their participation and the fresh ideas have consistently encouraged, uh, challenged me, and inspired me. 
Uh, finally, I would like to uh, express my deepest uh, gratitude to Professor Wallace Goldberg, uh, Chair of the um, uh, Department of Mathematics at Queen's College, for his consistent uh, and the continued support of my teaching and the research at uh, Queen's College. The City University of New York, as I said, is my uh, is home, is my is the very first place I visited in the United States. It's a wonderful and unique institution in the greatest uh, city in the world, uh, where I have been lucky enough to indulge in my passions for research and for teaching. I hope to continue to contribute to the field of mathematics and live up to this honor bestowed upon me. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, um, several appointments at the vice presidential level have come to our attention since our meeting on June 3rd, and so as not to delay the college's ability to fill those crucial positions until the fall, the appointments have been placed on the addendum to the Chancellor's University Report as a table item. They are as follows. Appointment of Claudia Schrader as Vice President of Academic Affairs and Provost at Bronx Community College. Appointment of Elizabeth Hendry as Acting Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost at Queens College. Appointment of James Steller as Acting Vice President for Academic Innovation and Experimental Learning at Queens College. Appointment of Professor Melentius as Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at York College. Mr. President, those don't need to be voted on today. They're in the Chancellor's University report, so they're not to have to be. They've been adopted, thank you. Thank you. Finally, Mr. Chair, it is my great pleasure to present calendar item 4J, the naming of the Matthew Goldstein Science Complex at the City College of New York. The Matthew Goldstein Science Complex will be comprised of the new science building <laughs> and the CUNY Advanced Science Research Center at CCNY, both scheduled to open in fall 2014. A third building that will be included in the complex is the New York City Structural Biology Center, which will house a consortium of 10 leading research university institutions, including CUNY, and in what will be the nation's premier center for structural biology. It is most fitting that this new complex be named for Chancellor Goldstein, whose determination to reposition CUNY firmly in the sciences has been embodied by his signature Decade of Sciences initiative. Under his stewardship, many of our colleges have recruited new faculty members and crucial scientific fields who will now be able to conduct their research in these new state-of-the-art facilities. At the Matthew Goldstein Science Complex, faculty and students from around the university will explore a myriad, a myriad aspects of the sciences such as bioorganic, molecular and cellular design, neuroscience and environmental science, all with cutting edge technology at their fingerprints. This flagship science complex is a testament to Matthew Goldstein's vision, creativity and tenacity and recognition of the extraordinary impact that the Chancellor has had on our university the Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration is pleased to recommend the naming of the Matthew Goldstein Science Complex at the City College of New York. Mr. Chair, I am honored to present item 4J for the Board's approval. I'll second that. Are there questions for the committee? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? 4J is adopted. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much.
<clears throat> we'll turn next to the Committee on Academic Policy, Programs, and Research. I'll, uh, I'll ask Wellington uh, Chen to present items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At its June 3rd, 2013 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar number 5A, the College of Staten Island, Master of Social Work, the proposed degree response to strong student demand and the needs of Staten Island community, as well as to the, to the regional shortage of MSWs in the public health domain across New York City and state. Building on its successful undergraduate program in social work, the College of Staten Island proposes the establishment of a graduate program leading to the MSW. The first licensure qualifying degree required for all clinical social work uh, jobs and most uh, supervisory jobs. CSI's programs will be offering a unique concentration in disabilities. Calendar number item 5B, York College, Bachelor of Science in Health Science. The proposed degree program draws from York's offerings in allied health, natural sciences, and business. Two concentrations are proposed. The healthcare management concentration will prepare students to fill a variety of entry-level administrative positions in a diverse range of health services organizations. The pre-health professional studies concentration will prepare students for graduate or professional study in fields such as public health, nutrition, and healthcare policy. Calendar item number 5C, Baruch College and Graduate School and University Center. PhD in business. This proposal so involves a change in degree authority for an already established program that has been in existence since the early 1970s. The proposed change of degree authority will switch the PhD in business from the Graduate Center as sole grantor to a shared degree involving Graduate Center and Baruch College. This will bring the state registration in line with reality of how the program is administered and taught. The Zicklin School of Business at Baruch ranks in the top 50 public universities business programs. Allowing Baruch to be reorganized as a doctoral granting institution will streamline its accredited reviews and enhance the external classification of the program, increasing its ability to attract external funding. Calendar number 5D, Hunter College. Reorganization of the Health Sciences faculty. This action completes the restructuring of Hunter College's Health Sciences program following the establishment of CUNY School of Public Health. The Communication Science, Audiology, and Physical Therapy programs will be housed in a new School of Health Professions consisting of the Department of Physical <laughs> Therapy, the Department of Speech, Language, Pathology, and Audiology, with all the programs, with all of these programs overseen by the Dean of Hunter College School of Nursing. Calendar number 5E, Hunter College, letter of intent for a Doctor of Education in Instructional Leadership. It is customary for new doctoral programs to be presented to the board twice, at the letter of intent stage and later at a full proposal stage. The Hunter College ED in instructional leadership is a clinical as opposed to a research doctoral program that is intended for educational practitioners currently employed in the field. It will equip graduates to take on leadership roles focusing on effective instruction and curriculum. This will be the first doctor of education program at CUNY. Calendar number 5F. LaGuardia Community College, closing of the Departments of Cooperative Education and Communication Skills. LaGuardia Community College is abolishing its Department of Cooperative Education because of the primary function of the department, internships, is now being handled by the appropriate academic departments. In addition, LaGuardia is merging the Department of Communication Skills with the Department of Education and Language Acquisition which will strengthen the curricular alignment between reading and ESL instruction. Calendar number 5G, College of Staten Island, creation of the schools of business and education and abolishment of academic departments. Most senior colleges at CUNY already have the academic departments organized into schools in line with the recommendation of regional and professional accrediting bodies. 
The College of Staten Island is putting such a structure into place. CSI is proposing the creation of two schools, a school of education and a school of business. The school of education will be comprised of the current Department of Education, and the school of business will be comprised of four departments, accounting and finance, two, marketing, three, management, and four, economics. In addition, the current Department of Political Science, Economics, and Philosophy is being dissolved. Three new departments are being created, two of them, the Department of Political Science and Global Affairs and the Department of Philosophy will be housed in the current Division of Humanities and Social Sciences. The third, the Department of Economics will be, as previously mentioned, housed in the newly created School of Business. Calendar number 5H, added item, the CUNY School of the City University of New York Agreement regarding Science and Resilience Institute at Jamaica Bay. Before you around the table, you will find an additional time-sensitive resolution for your approval. If approved, this resolution will authorize the General Counsel to execute an agreement on behalf of the University with the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation and the National Parks Services, a service to form the Science and Resilience Institute at Jamaica Bay. CUNY's proposal for this institute was selected in response to a solicitation by the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation and the National Park Service. For this initiative, CUNY will lead a consortium of institutions proposing to conduct research, provide education about, and increase access to Jamaica Bay. The institute will promote the acquisition and dissemination of knowledge about the ways in which natural and human systems may interact to shape and enhance the ecosystem and community, especially in light of an enhanced need to focus on resilience following the effects of recent extreme weather events such as Superstorm Sandy. Item number 5A through 5G were approved by the committee and I recommend the approval by the board in addition to item number 5H which is before you. I'll second that motion. Are there questions on any of these items? <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those items are adopted. Information items. Dr. Lowe informed the committee of new academic centers being established at two of our schools. The CUNY Law School is establishing a Center for International Peace and Justice, which among its endeavors will provide scholarships for students interested in international justice, host conferences and lectures, and operate a scholars in resident program. It is expected that the center will eventually be named after the late Theodore Sorensen and advisor and speechwriter to President John F. Kennedy. At present, approximately 1.1 million out of the required 2.5 million has been raised in pledges and gifts toward a permanent endowment and naming of the center. In addition, Queens College is establishing a center for computational infrastructure for the sciences, which is intended for to be both a research and resource center. The center will offer workshops and seminars and will disseminate interdisciplinary computational research. It will also provide summer research internships for students and will support faculty collaboration on large scale research projects. Dr. Lowe then turned to an update on pathways on which the chancellor has already updated you and an update on the CUNY School of Public Health. With respect to the CUNY School of Public Health, at the recent meeting of the Executive Committee of the CUNY Board of Trustees, the School of Public Health was authorized by, for the first time to hire faculty on its own without requiring them to have appointments at, at Brooklyn, Hunter, the Graduate Center, or Lehman. Also, at the Executive Committee meeting, the School of Public Health was given the authority to give degrees jointly with one of the collaborative colleges. And the first permanent dean of the School of Public Health, Dr. Amen L. Mohantes, was appointed. Effective September 2nd, 2013, Dr. L. Mohante is a distinguished leader in the world of public health. He's the current dean of the School of Public Health at the University of Nebraska, having spent most of his career, however, at Georgetown University. He's a neonatologist at the Specialist in Child and Maternal Public Health, and we're extremely fortunate to have him join us. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much.
Uh, we'll turn next to the Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs. I'd like to call on Trustee Kate Vasili. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs has six items for the Board's approval. The Committee met on June 3rd, 2013 and approved calendar items 6A, 6B, 6C, 6D, and 6E. Calendar item 6A, the establishment of an auxiliary enterprise board at the CUNY School of Law. Resolved, be it resolved, that the Board of Trustees approve the establishment of the CUNY School of Law's Justice and Auxiliary Services Corporation and the proposed bylaws and certificate of incorporation of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board. The explanation here is that CUNY, law, uh, CUNY School of Law would like to incorporate an Auxiliary Enterprise Board to support the school and assist the implementation of its public service mission. In accordance with Board Bylaw Section 16.10, the bylaws and certificate of incorporation of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board have been approved by the Dean of the Law School and reviewed by the University Office of General Counsel. The governing board of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board will be comprised of the Dean of Law School, or her designee, as chair, five students, four administrators, and one faculty member. If you have any questions, Senior Vice Chancellor Schaefer will be happy to expand on the establishment of the board. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6A. I'll second the motion on 6A. Are there questions about this Auxiliary Enterprise Board at the law school? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? That is adopted. My next item is calendar item 6B, the establishment of an auxiliary enterprise board at the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College. Resolved, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees approve the establishment of the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College Auxiliary Enterprises Corporation and the proposed bylaws and the certificate of incorporation of the auxiliary enterprise board. Explanation. The Stella and Charles Gutman Community College would like to incorporate an, an auxiliary enterprise board to support the college. In accordance with board bylaws, section 16.10, the bylaws and certificates of incorporation of the auxiliary enterprise board have been approved by the college president and reviewed by the university office of the general counsel. The name of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board is the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College Auxiliary Enterprise Corporation. The governing board of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board will be composed of the college president or his designee as chair, six students, three administrators, and three faculty members. <clears throat> if you have any questions, Senior Vice Chancellor Schaefer will be happy to expand on the establishment of the association. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6B. I'll second that uh, motion. Are there questions on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That 6B carries. My next is calendar item 6C, the establishment of an auxiliary enterprise board at Queens College. Resolved, be it resolved, that the Board of Trustees approve the incorporation of the Queens College Auxiliary Enterprise Corporation and the proposed bylaws and certificate of incorporation of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board. Explanation, Queens College is restructuring its Auxiliary Enterprise Board from an unincorporated association to a corporation. In accordance with board bylaws, section 16.1, the bylaws and certificate of incorporation of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board have been approved by the college president and reviewed by the University Office of the General Counsel. The name of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board is the Queens College Auxiliary Enterprise Corporation. The governing board of the Auxiliary Enterprise Board will be composed of the Queens College president or his designee as president, six students, four administrators, and two faculty members, as well as the executive director, of the Queens College Student Services Corporation, who shall serve as an ex officio non-voting member of the board. 
If you have questions, Senior Vice Chancellor Schaefer will be happy to expand on the establishment of the association. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6C. I'll second the, uh, the item. Are there questions uh, on this? <coughs> Calend oh, I'm sorry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> abstentions? That is adopted. Calendar item 6D. <coughs> City College of New York, Center for Worker Education, substitute student activity fee. Resolved. Be resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves a substitute student activity fee for all CWE students each semester and the summer session. And be it further resolved that City College students at the Center for Worker Education be exempt from the $64.35 student activity fee paid by full-time undergraduate students and the $40.85 student activity fee paid by part-time undergraduate students and instead be charged a substitute fee of $5.85 for all CWE students each semester and summer session. Explanation. The Center for Worker Education students attend classes at an off-campus site and miss many of the opportunities to participate in student activities that occur on the main campus. The college has asked that these students pay a substitute fee that will be used to support activities at this off-site, off, uh, campus off-site. If you have questions, Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez will be happy to attend on this substitute, to expand on this substitute fee. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6D. I'll second that item. Are there questions on the activity fee? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That is adopted. Calendar item 6E, the City College of New York, establishment of the Matthew Goldstein Scholarship Program for Students with Disabilities. Resolved, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorizes the establishment of the Matthew Goldstein Scholarship Program for Students with Disabilities subject to financial ability to be awarded annually to qualified students who are otherwise eligible for TAP based upon financial need, but whose dis disabilities impact their rate of progress in order to support their persistence toward an achievement of undergraduate degrees. Explanation. Chancellor Matthew Goldstein's career at the City University of New York is a testament to the core values of meaningful access and opportunity in higher education for all qualified students by extending affordable, excellent higher education opportunities to groups of students who have historically been underrepresented at CUNY. Chancellor Goldstein has been particularly devoted to access and opportunity for CUNY's more than 9,000 students with disabilities. He established CUNY's annual Disability Awareness Month in 2003, calling upon the university community to dedicate each April to a celebration of the rich contributions that people with disabilities make to university life. Chancellor Goldstein also has shown his indefatigable um, support of the CUNY Leads Program an intensive career readiness program that places CUNY students with disabilities in competitive employment at a rate of 70% within 18 months of graduation. One of the major problems facing such students is that financial aid resources have been limited by, for many of them. There are approximately 800 CUNY students with disabilities who would be otherwise eligible for New York State Tuition Assistance Program based upon their financial need, but are unable to attend college full-time because of the nature of their disabilities. Even with prevailing Americans with Disabilities Act, tap rate of progress considerations, these students often exhaust their tap eligibility long before they are in a position to complete their degrees. Consequently, many of these students are not adequately making progress towards degree completion and are placed at risk of attrition. 
providing financial support through tuition waivers in Matthew Goldstein's scholarship program for students with disabilities during this crucial time will enable impacted students to finish their academic requirements and secure the degree they have worked so hard to obtain. For more information about the Matthew Goldstein Scholarship Program for students with disabilities and how to contribute, please visit the CUNY website of edu slash Goldstein Scholarship. If you have any questions, Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez will be happy to expand on this scholarship program. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6E. I'll second that item. Are there questions about this new scholarship program? It is just outrageous that the New York TAP uh, program does not recognize uh, that disabled students may require longer to get their degree. So this, is, uh, this scholarship program will help correct a, um, what I think is a rather blatant injustice in the, in the TAP uh, yeah. program. Are there uh, questions about it? We hope that this will attract uh, broad support from the uh, CUNY uh, uh, community uh, in, in the, over the course of time. Questions? All in favor of the item? Aye. Any uh, opposed, abstentions? Uh, item uh, 6E is adopted. <laughs> Calendar item 6F, the City University of New York. University Student Government Fee Proposal. Mr. Chairman, I wish to present an additional item that has come to our attention, which we would ask the board to consider at this time in the best interest of the university. This resolution is included on the revised calendar, copies of which are available around the table. Resolved, be it resolved that the university student government fee currently set at 85 cents be increased by 60 cents per regular semester and summer sessions, beginning with the spring 2014 semester, to be paid by all students at the City University of New York. Explanation, the Board of Trustees is increasing the university student government fee at the request of the University Senate plenary and the majority of student governments in the university. In recognition of the fact that the fee has not changed in over 10 years. While costs of operation have, been signif have risen significantly, the Board of Trustees is also earmarking parts of this fee increase to expand student scholarships and the growing athletics conference within the university. In addition, 25% of the increase will help fund expanded USS programs, committees, and task forces with the approval of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Allocations and budgeting for the USS fee will continue to follow the rules and regulations of the University Fiscal Accountability Handbook. If you have any questions, Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez will be happy to expand on this fee proposal. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6F. I'll second this uh, <coughs> motion for 6F. Are there Questions about the fee proposal? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? That is adopted. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the last committee we'll hear from is the uh, Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. I'd like to call on uh, Trustee Frieda Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered 12 items at its meeting of June 3, 2013. These action items are listed in this board's meeting, board meeting as calendar items 7A through 7L. A, Bronx Community College, Gould Memorial Library Rotunda Egress Stair, to authorize the City University Construction Fund to execute a con construction contract on behalf of Bronx Community College for the installation of a new egress stair for the Gould Memorial Library. 
This will provide a secondary means of egress from the rotunda. The contract shall be awarded to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. The contract cost shall be 50% chargeable to the New York City funds and 50% chargeable to New York State Capital Construction Funds for an amount not to exceed $855,000. This project will be a CUNY managed project and the contract will be held by the City University Construction Fund. B. Queens College TV production facility upgrade to authorize the general counsel to execute a construction contract on behalf of Queens College to renovate the Queens College TV station. The contract shall be awarded to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder after public advertisement and sealed bidding. The contract cost shall be chargeable to the city capital budget for an amount not to exceed $3,145,000. C, LaGuardia Community College, Library Expansion and Renovation. To accept the design of the library expansion in the E-Building at LaGuardia Community College as prepared by Grusman Samton Architects with a construction budget of $8.9 million. The project will expand the existing library into an additional 21,250 21, square feet of space located on the second floor of the E-Building directly above the existing library. The expansion will maximize student seating and study space while ushering the library into the 21st century. The design firm of Grusman Sampton was retained through the CUNY Construction Fund Architectural Services Requirements Contract. D, Baruch College Campus-Wide Fire Alarm Project. To authorize the Vice Chancellor to execute a purchase order for the services to design, purchase, and install a fire alarm system in the Information and Technology Building at Baruch College under an existing New York State Office of General Services contract. The fire alarm system in the Baruch Information and Technology Building is not in compliance with the current New York City Building and Fire Codes, and the building is now under fire watch. In order for this building to have the required fire safety, the fire alarm system must be replaced immediately. The total cost of all such purchases shall be chargeable to the State Capital Construction Fund for an amount not to exceed $900,000. E, Bronx Community College, Meister Hall Dual Temp Piping Replacement. To authorize the City University Construction Fund to execute a design and construction contract for the replacement of old and deteriorated dual temperature mechanical piping in Meister Hall. The contract shall be awarded to the lowest and responsive and responsible bidder. The contract cost shall be 50% chargeable to New York City's funds and 50% chargeable to New York State Capital Construction Funds for an amount not to exceed $2,569,594. In addition, City University Construction Fund is authorized to enter into a contract with the New York, City, New York Power Authority for design and construction services. This project will be CUNY managed project and the contract will be held by the CUNY Construction Fund. F, Hostos College, Hostos Community College, lease amendment for a 560 exterior street in Bronx, New York. To authorize the execution of a lease amendment for space at 560 exterior street. Hostos Community College has occupied 11,153 rentable square feet of classroom and office space at 560 exterior street, also known as the Gateway Mall, since May, 2012, pursuant to a lease that will expire on July 31st in 2027. This resolution will authorize a lease amendment for the addition of two suites for a total of 17,864 rentable square feet of space to be added to the existing space for the grand total of 29,017 rentable square feet of space. The new spaces will be used by the college for additional offices and classrooms. G. Borough of Manhattan Community College, lease renewal at 70 Murray Street. To authorize the execution of a 20-year lease renewal for, the approxim for approximately 166,206 rentable square feet of space at 70 Murray Street. The Borough of Manhattan Community College has occupied office and classroom space at this location since June 2004, pursuant to a lease that will expire in May 2015. To ensure the college's long-term occupancy at these premises under favorable rental terms, the university has come to an early agreement with the landlord to extend and modify the current lease. H, central office lease renewal at 230 West 41st Street. 
to authorize the execution of a 20-year lease renewal and modification agreement for space at 230 West 41st Street. The central office has occupied 177,292 rentable square feet of office and academic spaces on several floors of this building owned by the Research Foundation of CUNY under two leases starting in July 2004. The leases will terminate in June 2017. The university and the Research Foundation have agreed on a new 20-year early renewal of the leases. The university will also take an additional 2,609 square feet of space in the building for a total of 179,901 rentable square feet of space. I, Brooklyn College, new lease of space at 25 Washington Street in Brooklyn, New York. To authorize the execution of, 25 year, of a 25-year lease for approximately 69,941 rentable square feet of space at 25 Washington Avenue in Brooklyn Navy Yard, um, at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. The University and Steiner Studios have come to an agreement on a new 25-year lease of space at 25 Washington Avenue located within the Brooklyn Navy Yard. The new space will house the new Brooklyn College Graduate Film Studies Program and will include offices, classrooms for design and production, a digital lab, studios, and other specialized spaces. J, Central Office, lease renewal at 3907 Prince Street in Flushing, New York. To authorize the execution of a 10-year lease extension and modification agreement for approximately 10,000 rentable square feet of space at 3907 Prince Street in Flushing, New York on behalf of the central office. The university has occupied 10,000 rentable square feet of space on part of the second floor at this site since 2003. The current 10-year lease is due to expire in August 2013. The space is used by the university's citizenship and immigration program as well as by Queensboro Community College for their continuing education program. The university will extend the term of the current lease for 10 years at a base annual rate that will remain the same at $469,692, um, that is $46.96 per rentable square foot of space for the first year and escalate by 2.5% per annum each year thereafter. Okay, College of Student, of, I'm sorry, <laughs> College of Staten Island. New lease for classroom space at 100 Merrill Avenue, Staten Island, New York. To authorize the execution of a two-year lease with three one-year options for a furnished 8,064 square foot modular building located at 100 Merrill Avenue in Staten Island, New York for use by the College of Staten Island's Office of Continuing Education <coughs> and Professional Development. The college has a shortage of instructional space on the campus. The college will relocate the Office of Continuing Education and Professional Development and many of its adult education programs to this site. The proposed lease will be for two years with renewal options for three additional years. L, City University of New York, Kennedy Center Acquisition 149 East 67th Street, New York, New York on behalf of Hunter College. To authorize the City University of New York to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with the Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York for the acquisition of a seven-story building at 149 East 67th Street in New York, New York, currently used by the Kennedy Child Study Center. All such agreements are, such, are subject to approval by the University Office of General Counsel. This, the facility will be used by Hunter for academic programming, including classrooms and faculty offices. The purchase price of $18 million will be financed by Hunter through a $10 million donation by a Hunter alumna and the balance from construction cost savings of a recently developed Silverman, so, so Silverman School of Social Work building at 2180 3rd Avenue. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. I'll second these items. Yes. A clarification on the Ostos lease. I understand that this lease will be 40 years from now. Is that what I'm saying here? That the space also will be uh, added will be in 27 July 31, 2027. 20, that means 14 years that ha that also had to be waiting to occupy those space. I don't think I'll be alive. <laughs> Uh, can I uh, call on the <laughs> Vice Chancellor to respond? What does it say? No, the termination date will be July 20, 20, 
Oh, is it 2027? So that means they have. You'll still be alive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that means I also have to wait 40 years to occupy the place. No, 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 no. no, no. They're no. in the place now, and we've taken more space, which they'll get into very shortly. It's for another floor. We're for taking another, another floor, floor, floor in the building. It's going to continue. They're already in the space, and we took more space. And the lease will expire in 2027. Okay. Thank you. And I'll see you when it expires. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are there further questions on any of these items? Yes, Mr. Chair. One, uh, yes. one point of clarification. Uh, in reading through these, um, I'm wondering if for purposes of uh, full transparency and consistency, we identify who our landlord or lessors are uh, in some cases they are, in other cases, they are not. Who it is we are leasing the space from, who our landlord is. I have no problem with that. All right, we'll see to it in the future. I just think that's full transparency. Perfectly fine. In terms of the deal. Very good. Any, for, any other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, abstention? Those items uh, are adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my report. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, give the board notice of actions taken by the uh, Trustees Executive Committee on May 22nd, 2013. Uh, there were three items uh, recommended by the Chancellor, uh, uh, and the committee determined that uh, it would be detrimental to delay uh, their advancement. The items are laid out for you as items 8A, B, and C, starting on page 37 uh, of your uh, uh, calendars. The, we don't have to approve those. Those are, I'm simply giving you uh, notice. We'll now adjourn the public session to go into a brief executive session, and we will reconvene in a, in a brief public session uh, following the executive session. I'd like to uh, call this public session of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York to order. Uh, we have several uh, resolutions to act on. Uh, I'd like to first call on, on Trustee Valerie Beal uh, to present a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, be it resolved that Rudolph F. Crew be designated President of Medgar Evers College, effective August 1st, 2013, at a salary to be recommended by the Chancellor of the Board of Trustees, subject to financial ability. Explanation? The search committee, which I have to take and say, which was just an incredible, dedicated search committee, many of whom are here with us today and I'd like for them to stand so I can personally thank them. <laughs> the search committee, which I was honored to chair um, at the conclusion of an extensive national search, recommended three finalists for the Medgar Evers College Presidency. The Chancellor is recommending Rudolph F. Crew as president. Mr. Crew has been a major figure in public education for more than three decades. He is currently the Chief Education Officer for the State of Oregon and was previously Superintendent of Schools or Chancellor of the Sacramento United School District, the Tacoma School District, the New York City Public Schools, and the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. He was also the executive director of the Institute for K-12 Leadership at the University of Washington and professor of clinical education at the University of Southern California Rosier School of Education. Dr. Crew received a BA in management from Babson College, a MA and E from degrees from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I'd like to 
recommend this and welcome Mr. Crew back to New York. Second. <clears throat> Are you ready for the question? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Abstentions? Welcome, Dr. Crew. I don't recall the last time someone clapped for me, so you can do it again. <laughs> <if you can. laughs> no. I am deeply, deeply honored, very, very, very pleased uh, to be here, and I want um, to thank uh, Chancellor Goldstein, um, his administration, uh, Valerie Beal, um, uh, Phil, and, uh, and others whose time and effort um, really um, paid off in being able to make so clear not only the possibilities that CUNY has in front of it and the uh, very, very important work ahead, but also um, the real possibilities of what Medgar Revers College has in front of it. And we live in a time that is um, extraordinarily complex. Um, I've heard lots and lots of stories um, as to, uh, you know, sort of what happens and what has happened in uh, so many places in institutions, both of higher education and K-12, and the world is a sordid um, sort of mixed bag of opportunities and challenge. And what I uh, accept is both the challenge of um, embracing both the community uh, in Brooklyn, um, the students of Medgar Evers College, uh, the faculty, and the enormous um, uh, alumni association and others that are part and parcel of, of, uh, of Medgar Revers College. And I accept uh, all of what the uh, numbers, the number, the, the, the number of people who, uh, who have been, been doing this work for some time, what they bring to the table. The challenge is very great. Um, I know that, and um, someone reminded me that, you know, when I came here to New York some time ago, the challenge was equally as uh, complex and interesting. Um, and I would argue that our lives are either daring adventures or nothing at all. And what we have here is an opportunity for hope, an opportunity to invest, and an opportunity to feel, frankly, that we did something in our lives far bigger than ourselves. And I came here because it's home, because I have a very, very long and hopefully forever relationship with this chancellor, and because I believe earnestly and forevermore in the lives of young people who are in this, in this college. And I will invest my life, my time, my love, and my energy in making sure that they get out of it what I have gotten both from you and from countless others in New York City over the course of many, many years. So, uh, Chancellor Goldstein, um, Chairman Schmidt, I, I want to both thank you very much for this opportunity. Members of the board, let me tell you that I uh, pledge myself to this body of work. And uh, as you were reading, Valerie, as you were reading my bio, I thought, you know, this actually does sound as though I can't keep a job. <laughs> and so my intent is for there to be no more beyond those readings. Uh, this is it for me, and I uh, will put myself full force into it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Rudy. Um, I'd like to uh, move the following resolution, uh, that the Board of Trustees hereby repeals the governance plan for Medgar Evers College, uh, approved by the Board on May 26, 1992, and adopts a new governance plan uh, set forth uh, in the appended uh, attachment. The old governance plan has proved itself to be simply uh, unworkable. It's far too, uh, it's far too complex. Uh, and so we need a, revis a revised governance plan that, that creates a clearer and simpler procedure that will enable Medgar Evers to uh, uh, to make appropriate 
and timely decisions. You have the new governance plan. I'm not going to go through it. You have it uh, on the table. So I'll move the resolution. May I have a second? Second. Are there questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The new governance uh, abstentions. Uh, the new governance plan uh, is adopted. I'd like to uh, now read another resolution uh, for this meeting, uh, resolution number 16, that the City University of New York Central Office uh, appointment of Associate Vice Chancellor for Corporate Foundation and Major Gifts. Uh, that's what the resolution is. And so resolve that the Board of Trustees approve the appointment of Andrea Shapiro Davis to the position of Associate Vice Chancellor for Corporate Foundation and Major Gifts Development, effective November 15th, uh, 2013, at a salary to be determined by the Chancellor. Uh, the explanation is that Andrea Shapiro, she has provided over 25 years of distinguished public service in senior positions involving development, government, and external relations, including uh, 11 years where she was special advisor to uh, Mayor Bloomberg, uh, where she served as the executive director for the uh, Mayor's Office of Appointments. Uh, more recently, she also was executive director of the New York City Commission on Women's Issues, and also she is a CUNY person. She worked for nine years at the CUNY School of Law, where she was Director of Development and External Relations. And also, before that, uh, she was four years as Assistant DA in the Queen's office. Uh, she has student background, and that is that uh, when she was at Queens College, she was a student leader. Uh, she also was a student leader at Hofstra. Uh, she has received numerous awards uh, for this. Uh, she, is, she is indefatigable uh, from the standpoint of the energy uh, and also uh, we really value her, her expertise and the wisdom uh, and the executive presence that she brings. Uh, she works hard and she delivers, and we're just so glad to uh, bring her. I'd like to ask for a second for this yes, motion. Yes, I'll, I'll second the motion. Are there questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Andrea. Um, I am truly honored to have this opportunity. Thank you, Chancellor Goldstein, and thank you, members of the Board of Trustees. So I'm a Queens College graduate. Um, I was a student leader. I was a vice chair of USS with my friend Ernesto Malave. Um, I remember giving speeches before the Board of Higher Education when the Honorable Judah Gribbets was on the board. <laughs> you don't look old enough for that. <laughs> well, I'm old enough. <laughs> I also worked at the CUNY Law School. I care deeply about this institution, about giving opportunities to people, to the whole people, to gain access to a quality higher education. I look forward to coming home to CUNY, and it really is a home for me, uh, to building on CUNY's fundraising progress and continuing to help enhance this incredibly vital engine of social advancement in New York City. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Chancellor Goldstein, and I won't let you down. Thank you so much. Uh, that concludes the public business of this uh, session of the uh, Board of Trustees. We will adjourn for the summer. I, I hope you all have a productive and at least at times restful summer. We'll see you all back next September.